What's going on you gamers, in today's video we're going to be delving into some more Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League and this time I'm going to be putting a build guide together for Deadshot that I think is truly amazing. This I would say is probably the best overall build for him currently in the game and I've put it together just after the latest patch update just to make sure it all works and gels as I think it does. In the background you'll be seeing what this can accomplish, you'll be able to get your traversal skill over and over again, dishing out massive amounts of punishment, gaining invulnerability, doing huge damage but also having a lot of fun as you play. This is a true run and gun style build but one that's absolutely devastating as you use it. Once you've got all of the pieces together for this you'll be able to dish out great damage with your weapons, chain traversal skills together for massive amounts of invulnerability as well as being able to spam grenades very often if you're after that OE effects. One of if not the very best build I've played and put together for those mastery levels at endgame. Now heading over to the gear, the first piece you're going to want to pick up is going to be a building thunder. This is going to be your tier 3 bane assault rifle and on it you're going to want to grab critical hit chance for the firearm, shield harvest chance and also one that's great for this is going to be shield regenerated on critical hits. When you've got this on, this can be your go-to weapon that you're going to use as standard just to get through all the content and to make sure you're surviving all of those tough encounters and enemy waves. If however you want to swap over to one that's going to do a lot of single target damage and great for those crit shots, then you're going to have the I'll make it quick sniper rifle. Again, another piece of the tier 3 bane set. Modify this with critical hit chance, critical hit damage and damage to crazed enemies. And with this, once you've got your buffs in place, you'll be able to take out even the toughest foes. With shots hitting upwards of 80-90k I've seen sometimes. Over to your melee weapon and we're going to be using Two Faces Persuader. This is going to be exceptional, it's really going to help you out, it's going to generate a little bit of additional grenade which we like to see, as well as buff its damage. Now we're going to get 4.5% harvest chance on it for its modifiers, 4% traversal attack resources from melee hit and plus 5% shield regenerated on melee hit as well. This is going to help us to stay in the game, anything we can do to get more shields, especially as they start getting a lot tankier and hit us with a lot more damage later on in those mastery levels, it's just something that's going to keep your survivability on track. Remember its perk, every melee hit on creased enemies has a 50% chance to drop a live grenade or grenade ammo at the enemy's feet. Also its villain synergy, because we've got the bane set going on as well, is going to be harvesting enemies now has a 100% chance of dropping a grenade ammo and also increases that grenade damage by 100% for 20 seconds. We've got grenades going off left, right and centre in this build, so that works absolutely ideal. Going over to the grenade we were talking about, and we're going to be using the tier 1 master chokehold. I really don't see anyone putting just one piece on with this, but I've found it works absolutely amazing in this build, so I'm really taking advantage of that. Now the reason this seems to be so good, and I could be wrong so let me know in the comments if I am, but from what I've tested it seems to stack on top of the two-faced persuader. Whereas you'd think it's not worth it because you've kind of got that going on already, now nah, instead of that you'll see one grenade drop when it shouldn't, you'll see two grenade drop at a time sometimes, and sometimes you'll see a grenade drop and they'll explode as well. This is absolutely amazing and it really helps us to generate our traversal skill easily as well because we'll have grenades for days and each time we're hitting enemies with them we're getting our traversal attack back fast. With this you're going to want 17% explosive radius, 2% shield regenerated each enemy hit with a grenade and the most important one, 3% traversal attack resource for each enemy hit with a grenade. Now I probably should have mentioned it earlier but both the melee weapon and this grenade right here chuck straight over to the Affliction Venom Frenzy as it's going to help you to get the most overall out of your build. Over to the shield and I believe this to be the tankiest one in the game and it's going to be the Turtle Shell. You're going to want to put 5% Suicide Strike resource generation on this so that we've got some way of getting that up as well, single target is very much needed later in the game, plus 10% traversal attack resource generation and then I've gave it even more shield. Now we've got a capacity of almost 4000 shield and because of how long this has actually got on its overcharge decay and how much overcharge we get with this means you can have round about if not a little bit more than 8000 capacity allowing you to survive encounters that nigh on most times should have killed any other person. This one has had a slight change up, when you hit at least one enemy with an enhanced reversal attack you gain 90% damage reduction for 5 seconds. The duration is increased by 2 seconds for each enemy killed, maximum of 15 seconds. They've taken a lot of the invulnerable out of the game but this shield is still definitely worth investing in. Over to our traversal mod and this one is still an absolute monster, the turtles still force conduit. Chuck on 15% damage to grunt enemies, 15% traversal attack damage and 48% traversal attack damage on crazed enemies and this one will dish out an awful lot of damage when you're playing those higher mastery levels. Remember each second you're standing still this is going to give you a stacking buff of 5% damage reduction for each second. 
This goes up to 10 times, so overall it would give you 50%, but most times you're using it for the other buff, which is when you're moving, you're going to get damage of 50% per stack each time up to 10 times, giving you a 500% nice extra damage boost. Over to our neck bomb, and we're going to be using Strange's Specialization. This one I've put on Electrified Resistance. If you don't want that, chuck something else on. I just wanted a little bit of negation to that because it can be a nightmare later on. But one that you definitely want will be 10% damage reduction from brute enemies, 50% damage to crazed enemies, and then after that, we're going to be getting the perk from it, which is afflicting five enemies with the same affliction. You are now immune to damage from enemies afflicted by that affliction for 20 seconds. Remember, we've got it with our melee. We're also going to have it with our traversal and we've got it with our grenades if we want to do that but most times we're going to be using our grenades for damage. The villain synergy also coming together with this is each time you craze an enemy you gain 50% damage and it increases for 30 seconds up to a maximum of 250%. You're going to have this up almost constant, it's going to be just generated and then chucked on top of your damage and when you get that invulnerable it's also going to help you to tackle and take out the biggest foes. The last piece we're going to be using is going to be our lucky charm, the little Osito. This is going to round off our tier 3 bane set, giving us all 3 pieces allowing us to get all of that bonus. For this, for the modifiers, grenade pickup, electrified resistance and 48% damage while shields are 100% works amazing to absolutely round out your build. Now the bonuses, the first one is going to be you deal 4% more damage to an enemy for each 1% of its health missing. The second bonus is going to be critical hits on enemies below 50% trigger Bane's Fury, increasing your damage by 50% to crazed enemies by 50% for 6 seconds. This is going to stack all the way up to 15 times, giving you a massive 750% when it's maxed out. And the absolute icing on the cake what we're going for, the tier 3 is going to mean all enemies hit with a traversal attack become crazed and each enemy killed whilst Bane's Fury is active generates 10% traversal attack resource. Killing an enemy with a traversal attack immediately gives you 5 stacks of Bane's Fury. Once this setup is in place, you're going to be able to dish out your traversal attacks almost constantly. If you're running out of them, you'll then be able to pick up and spam grenades in order to get them back very, very fast. And because of the skill tree I've put in place, I've also managed to make it so that we've got some really nice damage coming from our weapons. Now over to the skill tree, and I'm not going to go over everything because it would take an awful long time if I did. I'm going to point out the ones that I think you should be taking, and I'm going to give you an alternate route if you wanted to change this up a little bit and turn it into a more grenade orientated build than the run and gun one I've got going currently. First one, Assault Rifle Specialist. I've put this on because we were lacking a little bit on the damage of our Assault Rifle, where I expect a bit more into getting our shield back. Now we've covered that, we've got a bit more Assault Rifle critical hit damage, perfectly aligned it with the build. For our tier 5, pick up this one right here, I have the Sniper for the 50% critical hit damage. For our tier 7, Shield Sapper is pretty much a must. This is going to allow you to get 25% shield harvest chance and it's really going to help to round the build out because we're going to be putting that melee two-face moving whenever we want to generate grenades. For the tier 9, because of how much shield we've got and because of how often we're on overshield, you're going to want cover shooter. Your damage is now increased by 25% while your shield is above 50%. You should be above that constantly except in those uh-oh moments when you'll be able to go into your traversal and a few other moves in order to get it back anyway. For the tier 10, and I've gone with the I never miss. Now this means that a 40 combo plus you're going to have 100% firearm damage as well as 100% critical hit damage. Absolutely amazing and really sees your sniper rifle more than anything hit for some crazy numbers once you've got all your buffs on and every enemy's crazed. For the military and for your tier 4 you're going to want to pick up counter attack. At 10 combo and higher the damage dealt is going to be increased by 50% against enemies that have more than 50% health. For our tier 7 and we've got power through. When your shield reaches zero, it will instantly regenerate 100% and fully overcharge. This can only happen once every 180 seconds, but it counts as a semi-auto life and it can really help you out in those tricky situations. For tier 9, an absolute no-brainer, you're going to want to pick up Runner's High. It's going to give you 30% damage reduction and help with your survivability. And for the tier 10, I've put on this one right here, Deadly Assassin, but it is going to be down to your playstyle. I found this worked absolutely amazing as it's going to give me more shield overcharge as well as 150% firearm damage. I was trying to work out a well-rounded build where you're going to be using your firearms, you're going to be dishing out a lot of damage, you can keep your shield up with your firearms or swap over to your sniper as well as being able to get traversal attacks whenever you need, boosted by your grenades, and then go into them over and over again if you want to. If however, you want an even more invulnerable build, one where you're going to be using your traversal attack night on 100% and there almost never be any downtime of it, then you can pick up the tier 10 over here and that's going to be Carnage. 
This is going to give you 50% suicide strike resource build up, 50% fuel dump resource build up and 25% damage reduction. Both of these work perfectly, it's just what type of a build you wish to run. For our last tree and we're going to go over to the tier 4 top up. Performing a fuel dump, traversal attack has a 50% chance to fill up 25% dump resource. Again, helping us to get it faster, well worth picking up, and it's just going to work hand in hand with what we've got going on in the build already. For the tier 5, Flame At, now anytime you hit 5 or more enemies with fuel dump traversal attack, it's going to generate 5 combo, which you'll be generating very, very often. For our tier 7, and I've put on pinnacle hits, now your critical hit damage is increased by 50% whilst you're airborne. You're airborne a ridiculous amount with dead shots, so you may as well take advantage of it. Again though, this is down to your preference and if you wanted to, you could quite easily swap it out and put on air strike. Because of how much we've got going on with our grenades, if you want to take advantage of that, then this will give you 50% extra grenade damage. Lastly, for our tier 10, when you want the ultimate in absolutely devastating anything, pop your ult and this is going to increase your grenade and your fuel dump damage by 150%. Just an absolute sight to behold and if there's a lot of enemies around, you will be spamming grenades, you'll be using your traversal over and over again completely constantly in a screen where nothing can do an absolute damn thing about it because they're frozen in place, ready to just take the damage that you're dishing out of them. Lastly, going over to the squad skills, and I found these really easy to chuck on. You're going to want up close and personal for as much extra shield as possible. Then you're going to bop down, put as much overcharge on as possible. After that, try to focus all the way on your traversal attack as much as possible works ideal. And then I found best chucking whatever points you've got left into some damage, probably something like your sniper. And then after that, your assault rifle. But yeah, hopefully this helped a few of you guys and girls out. There'll be a lot more content from me on the way. I've really enjoyed making this build. It works amazing. And now I'll be able to move on to the next character, which is going to be Harley or King Shark. But yeah, hopefully you enjoy this build. As always, there'll be a lot more content from me. For now, take care. I'll see you on the next day. It suffuses you. So be my weapon.